All right, fam. So we are back at it again with another crazy video. And it cut. Whoa, I just stuttered. I'm going to keep that in there. <laughs> what the world? But today we got a video from my boy, Richard Lorenzo. Okay, now I don't react to probably like one of his videos, two of his videos, but I do watch a lot of his videos off camera. And this dude, man, he is different. Okay, he is different. Now, this is a pastor rebukes a Jehovah Witness. Now, if you don't know what Jehovah Witness is, there's a lot of things I don't know about Jehovah Witness. Like, I didn't do no full long research on Jehovah Witness, but I do know Jehovah Witness is a branch under with the other 45,000 denominations under Christianity. <laughs> under Christianity. <laughs> but, anyways, man, uh, hit the like button, subscribe to no post notifications, follow your boy on all social media platforms down below. I pray that this video reached the people that it needs to reach, and I pray that this video. Plus a seed in one of y'all, you know what I'm saying? Even you, even if it's one soul that gets saved today, that's all that matters. So yeah, without further ado, man, let's get it. Let's go. Hey, what's going on, family? So we're downtown Orlando, and I see some Jehovah's Witnesses posted up over there. We're just going to go over there and interview them and um, see what they believe in and just uh, trying to use apologetics to help them out. And I believe a seed will be planted. I believe that they will receive the word that needed to be preached. It's up to God if he wants to save their soul or not. We'll see. Let's go. Hello, guys. Hey. Right, we're just out here vlogging. So what, what, what is this, guys? This is an invitation to the most important day of the year we're offering to the public. Uh, it's a memorial of the death of Jesus Christ, so we invite as many as possible to join us if they would like to. And on the back of the one invitation, there's several languages there according to what you use. But on the back is a QR code that you can find the closest location to you where it's being observed. Oh, wow. When you said, like, the greatest day, I thought you were going to say New Year's Eve or, like, or like a, <laughs> a Christmas. So are, are you cool with this interview? I just ask you a few questions. What's the interview about? To ask questions about this. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like. Okay, cool. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. What's your name? Uh, Roger Lewis. Okay, my name's Richard Lorenzo. Nice to meet you. Um... So what do you guys, what, what is it like, is this uh, Christianity? Is it something different or? Yes, we consider ourselves to be Christians and we have uh, a nice uh, page on our website that's for anybody in the news field to look at can answer a lot of questions when it comes to what our beliefs are. And uh, so okay. I could certainly show you how to uh, find that page on the website if you'd like more information. Okay, and is this, is this like a supervisor or like the pastor, You're the pastor? No, we're all ministers. Oh, ministers. Okay. So, um, would you guys be cool with the interview too, or just asking a few questions? Not you. Okay. What is it Asking questions about this. I don't. Okay. Um, Are you? Well, there, we actually have uh, a section on our website yes. for media. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's uh, a mm -hmm. section that answers questions concerning our activity and, and all of that. So. So you guys don't you guys don't really know. But you guys, you guys, you guys just uh, push everyone to the website. But you guys don't really know what the your belief your beliefs are. No, we, we do, but we we just uh, would would like you to visit the website. So the way you guys, um, I guess, share your beliefs and your religion is through a website. No comment. You? No, I'm finished too. But thank you. I mean, is it the website that answers the questions? I don't. I don't... Well, it certainly does. Yeah. But wouldn't you guys know what you believe in? So then why wouldn't you guys speak about what you believe in instead of pointing people to a website? Because that's not our purpose to be standing here at the moment. So your guys' purpose is to stand here and point people to a website? That's one of the things we do, yes. Man. If you would like, you can give us your contact information and we can pass it to someone and they may reach out to you and answer all of your questions. So you guys don't know the answers to the questions or the things you believe in. You guys point it to a website and somebody else. If you can leave us your contact information. Uh, we'd be happy to pass it Sounds like an automated uh, response. I'll tell you this, though. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, and that he's the fullness of God bodily. That this is actually pointing people the wrong direction. It's, it's a false gospel. It's called legalism. It's what the Pharisees did. They stood on the corners. They tried to look religious, and now it's, it's modern-day pharisaical stuff. It's 2023. We point people to websites. I, I know the gospel. If anyone asks me, a Muslim, a Catholic, a Jehovah's Witness, I could be able to defend the gospel because I'm an actual ordained minister of God and confirmed by men. So what I would say is, instead of pointing people to a website and in fear, not knowing if you're going to heaven or hell, not even knowing if there is a hell or where people's souls go when they die, 
seek the scriptures, not by man and not by somebody who, who figured out the scriptures in 1970 something and, and figured out a new revelation and actually study to show yourself approved and receive the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you'll receive power. On the day of Pentecost, tarry in Jerusalem to receive power. And the Bible says you'll cast out devils, heal the sick, speak in new tongues, raise the dead. And those are things we're seeing still today. So I would highly recommend you guys would honestly repent, turn away from this wickedness, and stop pointing people the wrong way. Because he's not pleased. And on judgment day, when you face him, he's going to say you should have st studied yourself to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth, instead of believing in a man-made doctrine and standing here in fear because God loves you. And he doesn't want you guys to do this. The Father Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, loves you. He doesn't want you guys to do this. So... I just pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord would touch all your lives and reveal truth so you wouldn't be in deception and pointing people to a website and another man. But actually knowing the word of God, like the Bible says, studying yourself to show yourself approved. God bless you guys, okay? I respect your comments. Thank you. Thank Amen. You all right. Have a good one. As you guys can see, they're really, they really don't know the word of God. They point people to the website, to the Watchtower website, to the Watchtower Bible, which is a perverted Bible. Um, they try to directly translate it with the KJV, but it's different. It's, 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 they added to it and took away. And it's, it's a new religion. It's actually, um, it was established in 1870 by a man named Charles Taze Russell. And he named his group the Millennial Dawn Bible Study. And those who followed him, listen to this, were called Bible students. And he began writing a series of the Millennial Dawn, which stretched to six volumes before his death and contained much of the theology Jehovah's Witnesses now hold on to. Now listen to this. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society was founded in 1886 and quickly became the vehicle through, through the millennial dawn, which was very disturbing. Look at, this, look at this. They called them Russellites. And after his death in 1916, there was a seventh volume, the, finest, the final volume called The Finished Mystery. So this guy named Charles, named Charles Taze Russell added and took away from the Bible and created his own version. And he named it the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. That's crazy. So Jehovah's Witnesses, they go against the, the, the deity of Jesus Christ. They don't believe he's God. They don't believe he's the fullness of God bodily. They don't believe in the Trinity. They actually believe that Jesus is an incarnate of Michael the Archangel. That's what they, that's who they, that's what they believe Jesus was. They believe only 144,000 people will be saved. If you ask one, a Jehovah's Witnesses, are you going to be saved? They'll tell you they're not sure. That's why they live in fear, just like Islam, just like just like Mormons. They live in fear and they go evangelize in fear, not knowing if they're going to go to heaven or hell. As you guys could see, they stood there and they didn't even know their own scriptures. They pointed us to a website and to another man. Crazy. And they're supposed to be ministers who are supposed to study themselves. To st they're supposed to show themselves approved, right, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is in the Bible. Study yourself to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. They couldn't do it. They're very religious. The religious spirit is very condemning, very downgrading. They get very quiet and they get very, sure, whatever you say type of deal, prideful. And that's what you see with religious people. If you're Jehovah's Witnesses, Jehovah's Witness, repent today. Perfect. Let's be real. Oh, man. See, this is, bro, this is why I love uh freaking richard lorenzo okay i was finna say this is why i love jehovah witness okay no but this is why i love uh richard lorenzo bro because fam this man he look he spreads the gospel and when he spread the gospel he does it out of love literally true love this is what love looks like this is what spreading the gospel out of love look like because people may say oh how are you going to discredit somebody belief how are you going to do this how are you going to do that the thing with this is that when you know the truth you will tell someone the truth. If I know that there is something that's going to hurt you in my house, like let's say if I know that you're allergic to dogs or if I know that, I don't know, like let's just say I know you're allergic to dogs and I know I have a dog. I own a dog. See, me not being loving and not caring about you, I will let you come in my house knowing you're scared of dogs and knowing that you're allergic to them too. But me being a loving person, I will warn you and say, hey, I have a dog in my house. I know you're allergic. I know that you're scared of them. So just to warn you, I do have a dog. That's me. That's me being loving towards you because I'm telling you something 
that is true. Something that I don't have to tell you, but I want to tell you because I love you so much that I don't want you to get hurt. And that's the same way with the gospel. We love you so much that we do not want you to go to hell. And God loves you so much that he's willing to send you to hell. And people are, oh, how was that loving God? How? Because if you don't want to be, if you don't want to be in eternity with, or if you don't want to be in heaven with God for eternity, why would he want you? Why would he even place you in that where you don't want to be? You know what I'm saying? So if you, if you, if you live in a life right now that is not dedicated to the Lord, you're literally making, you're making a way for wherever it is that you want to go for eternity. So if you're living a life with this, with Satan, then that's where you're going to end up. You're going to end up in Satan's kingdom. That's where you're going to end up. If you live a life for the uh, for God, then you're going to end up in God's kingdom. But God is not going to force you into somewhere where you don't want to be. Okay, so if you don't want to be in the kingdom of heaven, why would he force you into the kingdom of heaven if that's not where you want to be? That wouldn't be a loving God. That would be a God that is forceful. That would be a God that don't care about how you feel. That would be that type of God, but God is not like that. God loves us so much that he gave us all free will to choose where we want to end up for eternity. So shout out to, shout out to Richard, you know what I'm saying, for spreading the good news and spreading the truth to Jehovah Witness. And when he said legalism, a lot of people don't know what that means. Legalism is just what he said about the Pharisees. If you read the Bible, do you know how the Pharisees acted? They prayed in public. They wanted they wanted to be seen. They wanted people to know that they were so holy and thou. They wanted people to know these things. I made a poll and said, how often do you pray? A lot of people commented. Well, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but I seen two comments on that poll uh, I didn't read all the comments, but I seen two comments and somebody and two of those people said the same exact thing. I don't pray. I just talk to the Lord. That is prayer. OK, that is true prayer. But what legalism will say is, no, you got to get down on your knees and pray. You got to get down on your knees and you got to do this. And you got to look up to the heavens and you got to look to the east and you got to look to the north. This is what legalism will say. But a true relationship with God is like. I am going to talk to my Lord and Savior. I'm going to speak to the Father. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to God as if I was talking to one of my best friends. But I will also show God the respect that he deserves. So I wouldn't talk to him like, man, I'm phone no gray, G. What's going on, folk? Like, I ain't talking to God like that. But I'm talking to God out of a loving, caring heart and expressing all my emotions and laying all my burdens onto him and laying at his feet. That is what I'm doing. I'm not getting on my knees all the day and every day. Just like, don't get me wrong. You can get on your knees and you can pray, but don't think that that's the only way you can pray. You can pray by sitting down. You can pray by standing up. I stand up and pray. That's the best way I can pray. I like to move around because I'm very anxious. I can't stay still. So I like to move around and walk around my room and pray. That's what I do. You know what I'm saying? That is exactly how I pray. So don't be, don't become legalistic and don't allow legalistic Christians or legalistic people in general cause you to not come to Christ, cause you to really ruin your relationship that you could truly have with God because you're so focused on you or you're listening to these legalistic Christians that's telling you that, oh, you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. You have to be like this. You have to be like that. You got to cover your head when you pray. All women should cover their head and wear long dresses and they shouldn't wear pants. And you, that's legalism. That is legalism. Jesus didn't come down so that we can be in a religion. He came down and died on that cross so we could be in relationship with our father. That is why Jesus came down to die on that cross so we could be saved, of course, from all our wicked sins. So we could be saved from the wrath of God, but also so we can have a stronger relationship with the Lord. We can have a stronger relationship with the father. That's what we need to be striving for is a relationship with God, the father. That's what we need to be striving for, bro. Stop being in all these different religions. Oh, I'm a Muslim. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. If you just truly seek the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, the world may call you a Christian, but it ain't about, it ain't about being a Christian. You will know in your heart that, man, I have a true relationship with my father. I have a true relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm speaking in tongues. I'm going now. I'm being a witness to the word of God. I'm doing the things that God wants me to do. You will start to feel these things once you have a relationship with God. But when you living in religion, you have no hope. You're fear. You fear death because you don't know if you're going to go to heaven or not. 144,000 people going to heaven. That's cap. That is bull crap.
That's bull crap. The Bible tells us that if you believe and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and that he died on the cross, and not only did he die on the cross, but the Lord the God raised him up from the dead. If you believe that in your heart and confess that with your mouth, you are saved. You are saved. That's what the Bible, that's what the Bible says, the Holy Bible. Not what the Jehovah Witness reading. Not, not no Bibles where they're taking in and putting stuff in. No, not those Bibles. Not Bibles that came 500, 600 years after the Holy Bible. No, we're talking about the original manuscripts. We're talking about the Holy Bible. We're talking about Yahweh. We're talking about Yeshua. That's what we're talking about, bro. Anyways, man, I know I'll be going on the sermon. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. I love talking about God. You know what I'm saying? So I know I'll be going on a sermon, man. Forgive me. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, it's been your boy, Depan. I love each and every one of y'all, bro. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.